Many Muslims, however, would prefer infidels remain in the dark about these elements of their holy book. Protesting against the FBI's use of informants to ferret out jihad terrorist activity in mosques in the United States, Hussam Ailoush, executive director of CARE for Greater Los Angeles, said to a Muslim audience at a mosque in April 2009, We're here today to say our mosques are off-limits. Our Quran is off-limits. Our Quran is off-limits. Of course, Ailoush is not trying to dissuade infidels from reading the Quran, which, after all, is something that CARE encourages. It's just that Alouche doesn't want infidel FBI agents to draw the wrong conclusions from their own readings, conclusions that might contradict CARE's insistence that the Quran teaches peace. Such an investigation is imperative for America's defense against the global jihad. Nevertheless, the complete infidel's guide to the Quran will inevitably be branded as anti-Islamic, as well as bigoted, hateful, and Islamophobic. But is it really? Is the point of this book to spread hatred of the Quran, Islam, and Muslims? Of course not. Certainly this book is not written from the standpoint of Islamic faith. It is, in fact, a guide designed for those who do not believe in Islam, to help them understand why Islamic terrorism and supremacy continue to threaten the United States and so many other countries around the world today. But while it is not a believer's guide, it is a trustworthy guide. This book is designed to present a 100% accurate view of the Quran, so that infidels can know what they should expect from a devout Muslim who reads his Quran and takes it seriously as the word of the one true God. Whether the Quran really says what this guide claims it says can easily be verified, and if this guide reports its contents accurately, that couldn't possibly be an act of hatred or bigotry. If the Quran really curses Jews and Christians, see Surah 9, verse 30, and calls for warfare against them in order to bring about their subjugation, see Surah 9, verse 29, it is not Islamophobic to forewarn infidels by pointing this out. It is simply a fact, and it should go without saying that it is not a fact that should move any listener of this audiobook to hate anyone. The fact that the Quran counsels warfare against unbelievers should move listeners to act in defense of freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and the legal equality of all people before it is too late. Jihadist activity will continue as long as there are Muslims who believe that the Quran commands it. And that's why infidels have a responsibility to themselves and to their children to know exactly what is in the Quran and to act accordingly. It's not a matter of hate. It's a matter of survival.